Hello everyone and welcome back to another car profile video where we're looking at the Subaru WRX Group 3 car. What a lovely sounding engine it's got and you know what else would be lovely? You hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate the support and hopefully you enjoy this video. So we're looking at the Subaru WRX Group 3 car. There are its bot figures. It's the same across all three tracks, probably because it's an older car. It's front engine rear wheel drive, six gears in this car. It's also turbocharged as well, like a lot of Subarus, of course. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Uh, and this is, as I say, the old Subaru now. It's been replaced with the BRZ GT300 car that now sits in Group 3. This did win the Manufacturer's Cup. This very car did win it. And I'd argue, actually, it has some power issues. So when you deliver the power initially, if you're at the top of the rev range, it does love to spin its wheels. Quite common in a lot of turbocharged front engine rear wheel drive cars in this category. Also, in slower corners, it does react very bizarrely. And I did try this with a Beat the Meta at Monza very recently. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out at the end of this video. There will be a link to it. Without further ado though, we are going to go from Le Mans that you'll see in the background straight to our low speed bot test where we're at Laguna Seca then as we head down in towards turn number one. Now I said it struggles in low speed corners and as we come into here, it just loves to understeer. It really does. It's, it's quite bizarre with how it understeers there. Now once you start picking up some speed, it's then got the ability to turn. And as we go through this right hander, we short shift to third gear there to try and avoid some of that power up steer which we do still get there. We are racing the Audi R8 LMS Evo down that bottom right hand side. We're one tenth down on that Audi R8 as we continue on out of there and head up to the next turn. Then this left hander, it really did struggle here. It really did struggle indeed. It's one of those corners where you can see there with the wiggle. I just couldn't get right. Couldn't get the feeling for it. However, it didn't struggle here at the kink. You could just chuck it in and it would settle itself really nicely through that corner. No issues whatsoever. I was able to take that pretty much every single time. I had one iffy moment where I did push my luck. Going into the court screw, this is where that understeer kicked in again, but because we go straight down here, it starts to sort itself out. And we're going downhill now, so all that weight over the front end, it doesn't really want to turn in that well, but it does feel like it's doing okay then when you get to these medium speed corners. We are three temps down on that Audi R8 LMS Evo as we head towards the final corner then. Slow corner this, of course, so we are going to struggle here. You can see me just wanted to turn the car, wanted to get around, wanted to accelerate. You're probably feeling it from behind the screen as well. As we head towards the line then, what we're looking at here, we're half a second down on the Audi R8 LMS Evo in terms of faster slaps. But remember, in these car profiles, we'll look at the optimums to give us a better idea and a better picture in terms of where it sits. So it's not in the top 10 then. It doesn't get into that top 10 at all. Not really a handling car then. Of course, all the bops are different on a lot of cars. Not this one, apparently. So we're going to see where it sits then. Is it in the top 20? No, it doesn't even make the top 20. Now, it did get a 121.7 in terms of its fastest lap. So it must be on the next page in the top 30. Uh, of course, we do go into the top 40 now. And it's P24 in the end. So it's sitting pretty much bang in the middle at the moment. If we had done all 48 cars already, yes, it would be slap bang in the middle. But we haven't done that yet. We've done 36 cars so far. I uh, realise that some of these cars need retesting. Not so much at Laguna Seca. There's only seven retests needed to be done here. But they are going to come. So please don't worry with those. They will come. You will see them. And you will get an overall picture in this Group 3 category for the Manufacturer Series. Now we jump to the next track then, the medium speed bop test, where we're at Suzuka. Now coming into turn one, really enjoyed turn one in this car actually, no issues at all. It did start to get issues here though on the exit. I really wanted it to sort of turn in and keep going. You notice a bit of a wiggle there because I wanted to plant the foot and get that rear rotated. Did that quite often. As we start going through these S's, it's only when you start dropping to under 90 miles an hour is when it really starts to well, get understeer again and really just not want to turn. Notice here, I'm trying my hardest to get the car rotated. Not really working out there. We're three tenths down on that Porsche 911 RSR, which is a very quick car here at Suzuka. As we continue on out of there, then we're going to head towards Degna 1. Now, Degna 1 is where we do test the suspension a little bit. Now, this car actually has no issues with the bump at all, really. We get towards Degna 2. No issues here either, to be honest with you. Bit of understeer on the exit, but nothing major. Not really shown in this particular lap. But it did struggle there. That's actually my best sector two of the session, just to keep you informed and, well, keep you posted in terms of the picture. We get to the hairpin then. This, oh, it struggled so much at this corner. In terms of accelerating out of it, just getting loads of power over there, having to short shift. Really did struggle in that hairpin, and you, you just saw it there. We're three temps down still on this Porsche. I think it's actually nearly four temps as we head towards Spoon. So this car then, in terms of Spoon, not too shabby at all, really. Goes into here absolutely fine. We get to the second part of Spoon, though, and it's the same picture. Just wanted to get round the corner. We're not even 100% throttle straight away. You can see the understeer as we go off the circuit there as we continue down here towards 130R. 
where are we sitting then versus the Porsche 911 at the end of sector three let's see then as we get to there then seven temps down oh it's a bit iffy coming into 130 then 146 miles an hour not the slowest in the world but not the quickest either we have seen 152 there now i think that is our record as we go into casio triangle it struggled in this chicane oh my word it was painful to do that every single lap this lap i tried third gear all laps i tried second gear it was just painful these slow corners really do but the subaru suffers with these low speed corners it really does we finished eight temps down on the porsche 11 in terms of fastest laps Let's see where it sits in terms of those optimums, though. A lot of cars are around that 0.4 area, 59.4. Let's see then. So not in the top 10 there. A couple of cars in the 58s, of course. The Porsche 911, we don't have to retest. The BMW M6, we do. So at the moment, arguably, the Porsche is the only car sitting in that 58 area. Not in the top 20 then. As I say, the 0.4s is the area. Actually, it's going to be 0.3s now. Looking at that one there, uh, 0.1s as well. That's where a large bunch of the cars are sitting. Doesn't even make the top 30. Doesn't make the top 30. Those slow corners are brutal in this car. They really are brutal. And the car just struggles. It really does struggle. It's actually P31 there. Down there with that Hyundai Genesis. Of course it is. Uh, it's really at the bottom end. And I'd say it's the low speed corners. The hairpin, it struggled. The Casio Triangle, it struggled. It just doesn't want to turn. And I can see that in the sector times, which you will be able to see soon. Trademark, obviously, because I keep saying soon on the website. Let's go to a high-speed bop test then, which is Bathurst. If you're wondering why we're still at Bathurst, do check out the previous car profile. All is explained in that video. But as we go through turn number one, it didn't really struggle too much on turn one. I did have a bit of understeer, but I just started planting my foot and it was fine. Got a little bit unsettled occasionally with power oversteer, but nothing major, if I'm honest with you, as we get towards the end of sector one then, what we're looking at here. So under attempt down on the Suzuki, not a bad sector time, to be honest, 19.128. Definitely up there uh, in terms of the best as we go into this right-hander. It did struggle on that right-hander a little bit, but mainly because of power oversteer. You want to be at the top end of third going into fourth gear in a lot of cars, and this wants to have a, a rear-end wiggle, should we say. This left-hander here, another rear-end wiggle. Very prominent for FR cars. Not so much here on this particular lap. It did suffer with it, though. And as we go up the mountain, it starts to actually settle down and actually feel quite nice going up the mountain, if I'm honest with you. Coming down here, then, no issues at all as I go into here. Look at that slight lift casual normal what i expect here going into this left-hander very quick in some stages on this left-hander and you see there we're up at 140 miles an hour so it's doing not too shabby at all here four temps down under suzuki not too bad at all as we come down the hill then it loves the brakes this car it's got very good brakes this car it really does and i did mention that in the beat the meta video as well no problems there with the dipper really it did suffer with a bit of power over there but it was very controllable for its elbow again did struggle a little bit on the exit of this corner. So I tried second, tried short shift to third. And you saw what I did there, which was a short shift to third then as we continue on. Let's see where we are versus that Suzuki Vision Gran Turismo car at the end of sector three then. Wasn't too bad of a sector three from the looks of it anyway. Oh, two and a half temps. It's not too shabby at all then. So nearly into the 32s sector times wise, 132. Uh, that's when they are very good cars. 169 mile an hour at the speed trap there as we go into this left-hander. Exiting, not too shabby. No dramas really. I did try and push my look there a little bit, but I couldn't really push anymore. We are on the final lap, of course. Those new to the car profiles. It's one out lap, 10 fast laps. This last corner was brutal in this car. Oh, my word, it was brutal. Struggled a lot on that corner. Again, it's a slow corner, isn't it? So I'm always going to struggle. A 202.384 then in terms of fast laps. Only half a second down on the Suzuki, which is not too bad to say it's not a top speed car. As we pull up here, and I always check the fuel there, if you're wondering. I do check the fuel on every single circuit. I just don't give you that information, but I do have it uh, to my, well, in grasp, should I say. And again, it's something that will go on the website. So we did finish there on, was it 202.3? I think it was. We are going to see where it is in terms of optimums then. Not in the top 20 then. So it didn't really go much further in the optimums. I can't even remember what it said at the bottom, if I'm honest with you. Some of you eagle-eyed viewers will have seen that. Uh, oh, 202.1. So it's there or thereabouts, actually. Could very much get into that top 20, the Subaru. So it's actually quite good at Bathurst, if I'm honest. It is quite good. If you can really, really conquer the slow-speed corners, it performs quite well, which is nice to see. It performs at least one circuit there, the Subaru WRX. In fact, the BRZ down in P35 there, it's newer version or new, newer teammate. I don't even know. Younger son, should we call it that? Uh, down there, that does need a retest, though, of course. Um, and we'll see what happens with that retest. We go to the fuel test now. Top left is automatic fuel map one. Bottom left, fuel map three. So if you drive an automatic, only focus on those two sides. If you don't, half shift top right, half shift plus fuel map three. Bottom right, that's the emergency fuel saving. So now you get a, a, an overall picture in terms of how it uses its fuel here as we head towards the 2,000 meter mark. 
which is where we test in terms of performance. Remember, we're measuring performance here, and then you can extrapolate that over lots of laps to w uh, work out the fuel. First one finishes in, top left, fuel map one, automatics, that's maximum revs there, 57% uh, fuel, and 25.2, uh, I think that reads there, uh, top right, 25.4. If you wonder where the line is, remember, it has to be on the line or over it in order for me to stop the frame. So a hard shift there, 63%, 6% saved, loses two temps. Sounds about right, to be honest with you, with a lot of other cars. 65% down that bottom left, shows you that fuel map is not the best way to say fuel, we've always said that. Um, 25.8, I think that reads, I can't read this, and a 26.1 on the bottom right, emergency fuel saving there. Overall, 13% save, we have seen people or cars save more, uh, however, 70% is about the average, I think, from memory, in terms of the ability to emergency fuel save and have 70%. But it's where it sits on the leaderboard. Remember, we measure performance because if the car could save a billion tons of fuel but only goes one mile an hour, not really very useful in a race, is it? Whereas if it's fast and can save fuel, then it's quite good then. So here's the maximum revs, top 20, not fitting in there at the moment. Uh, we need to go to the next part of the leaderboard to see where it sits. P22 then, not too bad really, 25.2. It's with there or thereabouts. Uh, beats Pergerati, dead on fuel, beats a few it's it's about average actually isn't it it's not it's not it's not great it's not bad it's bang average there in terms of its fuel usage in terms of maximum rpm the critical one is though of course where does it fit when we do start fuel saving because that's the whole point of this test so we know where it sits now half shift then so we were p22 on the maximum rpm does it go into the top 20 on a half shift now it's got a turbo so you do expect it to improve it does it improve though just there, just it goes to P20. 63% uh, fuel, literally not, same as the Alfa Romeo, same as the Ford GT race car, same as the Beetle. It's there or thereabouts, same as the Huracan. And they're all in that same ballpark figure of 25.4. So, again, I'm going to say it's pretty average, to be honest with you, this car. Does beat its uh, Subaru BRZ though there that we saw at the bottom of that one. Again, that does need a retest. I will clarify that. Uh, and that retest will be coming. I have ordered them. I did say that in the previous video. I have ordered them. And I know what I'm going to be testing. It's just when I test them, that is. So Fuel Map 3, if you're an automatic driver, does it? Is this car usable? Is probably the best way to describe it. Um, let's have a look on the leaderboard. So not in the top 20. It did go up into the top 20 on the previous test. Doesn't go into the top 20 on this one. So performance-wise, it's not quite there in terms of automatic. You may want to pick a different car. Uh, so we wait. I'm assuming it's going to be very close. Uh, oh, P25. That's the lowest position so far in the fuel. Uh, as, again, it's about average. You know, 65%. It's around where everybody else is there. Under 26 seconds, which is always good to see in the fuel map 3 test. I wouldn't use any of these cars if I was an automatic driver. Let's put it that way. Especially the BLZ. So if you are a Subaru fan and you're an automatic driver, it is a WRX over the BRZ at the moment. So we go to the emergency fuel saving then. Where does it fit? So this is obviously when you really need to save fuel. There's only one kind of 70s there. That's the Mazda RX Vision GT3 Concept. That's in the top 10, under 26 seconds. 70% um, there for the Subaru. So it's not bad. It's not bad. It can do it. And it's not too bad on the performance. About average, again, I would say. So you can use this. It is a choice. And if you do pick Subaru in the manufacturer series, you've got the choice of the BRZ for performance potentially and the WRX for fuel saving races. Again, I still need to test the BRZ in, in this concept, uh, context. There we go. Uh, but at the moment, it's not looking that good, is it? Let's be honest with you for the BRZ. It must have had a major change for it to even move up the leaderboard. And we don't really see that even with the retest. We don't see them move up too much, to be honest with you. So just keep that in mind. That's the fuel test done then. Let's have a look at the tyre test, which is the final test that we do. And we're at Sardinia Layout C in reverse. So what we do, we go out the pits and we just do laps. And we do laps. We run a multiplier, of course, just so we're not wasting three hours doing the test. And what we're going to do is advance to lap number four. Yes, lap number four. We don't normally do that too often. It does mean it's not that good as we go up the hill here. And it's still got a bit of tyre life left here. You know, it's a bit of understeer then as we go into this right-hander. And we are four times down our fastest lap as well. So it's showing that tyre wear is having an impact. This Subaru eats its front left. It eats its fronts in general, I would say, actually, this car. Not sure why, to be honest with you, because it's not that good in terms of handling at low-speed corners. Maybe that's the issue with this circuit. Very car. It's a big car weakness here, and it's having an issue with the circuit. I'm not too sure. Looks like we are going to start lap number five, though, here as we continue on. And we are in the 53, though, so it is struggling on terms of that tyre wear as we head in towards turn number one. And we go into here. We've still got a bit of tyre. Oh, no, it's just finished. That's about to say. We've still got tyre life here. What's going on, Tidge? Um, so the start of lap number five is where it finishes. So it is going to be below average here. 
And what we do is we add up all the four laps plus what is remainder on lap number five. And that tells us the total time the tyres last at that circuit. Yes, distance driven could be measured as well, but it's all relative and you get a good idea from this test, whether it's good or bad. They're the good ones that are in the top 10. So if you've got a tyre wear race, pick any of those guys. They're pretty good. Subaru BRZ is up there. So if it's a tyre wear race, I'd pick that. If it's a fuel saving race, I'd pick the WRX. If it's combined, I'd probably pick the BRZ if I'm honest with you out of the two. Not in the top 20 then, not even in the top 30. Now, remember, we always talk about FR versus MR here, and it, it's down with the MR cars, which do struggle on tire wear more than FR cars. In fact, this is the lowest performing FR car, the only FR car on that bottom end of the leaderboard. The Subaru is not good on tires. Oh, sorry, the Subaru WRX is not good on tires, so do keep that in mind. Now, we're going to look at the top speed. This is based on the speed trap at Bathurst. Yes, there's different bops on different circuits. I'm aware of that. But this just gives you a general idea of how well the car performs when it's got to continue to pull along. And the top speed in general is only going to matter at high speed circuits in reality. But I know some medium speed circuits are impacted there as well. Not in the top 20 then and not in the top 30. I think from memory, it was 169 miles an hour. So it is technically tied for P25 with that BMW M6, the Ferrari, the Honda, the Lexus, the Porsche. You can see them all there. So yeah, there it is, 169 miles an hour. It is ordered alphabetically once we have that speed. I can't do kilometers an hour because I race in miles an hour. Maybe it's something I need to learn for the future. I'm not too sure, but I much prefer miles an hour because I use it in real life. And most of you guys are actually using miles an hour as well. It's mainly the British and the Americans watching who use miles an hour. In summary then, this is all three laps added up together. So obviously this top off is the meta cars, uh, but let's go to page two. The Subaru doesn't fit in page two either, the Subaru WRX. Is it going to be on page three or is it going to be at the bottom? I suspect it should be on the next page. Surely. Yes, it is. P26. So it's just below average, this car. Just below average. It's not performed that well, to be honest with you. It's not a car I would overly pick. And it does explain a lot in terms of the tests. Uh, and when I was racing, beat the meta as well and some of the weaknesses I found. So, as I say, unless it's a fuel saving race. And again, in a fuel saving race, it's not a car I would particularly go for. There are definitely better fuel savers out there. This isn't a car to choose. It does need a change in its balance of performance. That's going to be it for this video, though, folks. I do hope you've enjoyed this car profile video of the Subaru WRX Group 3 car. If I haven't done your car profile yet, and it's still yet to do, and I'm not updating it, these are those cars that I've never done before, let me know in the comments. Write the car and the manufacturer. I'll add it to the vote. We do a beat the meta first to try the car out, really get to know the car before we do these tests. i say that's going to be it for me, folks. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel to stay in touch with all the latest content and help with that journey to 50,000 subscribers. Remember, I am partnered with GT Amiga and Fanatec. You can check those affiliate links down below or use the discount code that you can see on the screen. Two videos there to check out, and I hope to see you in another video. I'll live stream again very soon.